How's it going everyone? I'm Kyle and in this week's tutorial I'm going to be introducing you to the C programming language. Remember a few months ago when I said that I was thinking about branching away from EB3 from a little bit to do a series of tutorials on a text-based programming language? Well, this is it. It's finally here. I'm starting a long-running series of programming tutorials focusing on the C programming language, which will start, uh, well, this week, I guess. And it'll run for about 15 to 20 weeks, so more or less the first half of this year. Unfortunately, this week is the boring but obligatory introductory tutorial. We won't get to much programming, but it's important because I need to give you a little bit of background foundational information on the programming language. So I chose uh, a text-based programming language, specifically C, because I think it's an important skill for anyone in a technology field today to know uh, at least some kind of programming. And I chose C specifically uh, for a number of reasons. Really the first reason, if I'm being honest, is because that's the language that I feel most confident in. That's the language that I learned first and I think um, from my perspective that it's good for a lot of other people to learn C first. Uh, the reason being is because it's a lower level language. Now what that means is that you're going to hear terms like low level and high level uh, thrown around a lot in the world of computing. So um, to conceptualize this low high level thing, imagine that we have a spectrum now. On one side we have the computer or the machine that we're trying to program and on the other side we have the person who is programming it. Um, now, the person who's programming it speaks some kind of language, uh, maybe it's English or, or Portuguese or Japanese or whatever kind of language, uh, but the uh, computer that we're trying to program doesn't understand human languages. It only understands machine code. Now, what a programming language effectively does is it's meant to be a bridge between the human's communication and the robot's communication, some kind of middle ground that they can meet on so they can communicate with each other and that the human can effectively transfer the commands that they want the robot to execute. All of the programming languages that we use exist somewhere on the spectrum. A programming language that's closer to the machine code is going to be considered a low-level programming language, and a programming language that's closer to the language that we humans speak is considered a higher-level programming language. Now, C, for example, is considered a low-level programming language because you have to do things like define your data types, do things like memory allocation, make sure all of your statements are punctuated with semicolons, uh, there are things like point um, this is all stuff that you'll be learning over the next few weeks, and I promise it's not as scary as it sounds. Uh, the other thing is that C code is uh, run through a compiler. So you will, you will type up your program and you'll compile it, and what the compiler does is it converts the programming language into machine code, and the machine, go, uh, machine code gets sent to your robot, your computer, microcontroller. Python, on the other hand, is an example of a higher level programming language because a lot of that stuff that I mentioned, like memory allocation and pointers, doesn't exist in Python. You'll probably never even uh, hear of it if you start as a Python programmer. And Python, instead of being compiled, is run through an interpreter. What that means is you write your Python file, and the Python file gets sent in completely unchanged form over to your robot or microcontroller or computer, and the microcontroller computer, whatever, will run the, the Python code as is through an interpreter. And for that reason, Python actually ends up being a lot slower. But the advantage is that Python is a little bit easier and more intuitive because it's closer to the language that we humans speak, hence higher level. As a matter of fact, my friends and I used to joke all the time that Python is basically just writing in plain English sentences. Yeah, my friends and I were nerds. What can I say? I'm kidding, of course. I don't actually have friends. Now, relating that back to what I was saying before about why I chose C, C is a lower level programming language, which means I think it's a good place to start because it'll give you a better understanding of how the computer actually works because it brings you closer to the way the computer thinks where, than something like Python or whatever. And if you start with C, languages like Python that are higher level will seem like cake in comparison. Not that C is inherently hard, but it just asks you to think more critically about what the computer is doing, and that's why I think it's a great way to learn computer science and a great fit for this channel. 
The other thing I want to say is that C is a really useful language that has been around for a while. I believe it was invented in the 1970s. Someone in the comments section can fact check me on that. And all of the operating systems and embedded systems uh, that we use today, like things like um, iOS or Windows, are all programmed using C. So even though a lot of the, uh, the fancy new deep learning things are being written in Python, I think that C is always going to have an application and it's never going to go away. The C programming language, much like many other programming languages, can be written in many different development environments and it even comes with its own dialects. Specifically for my tutorials, I'm going to be using Robot C, which is a development environment specifically for EV3 robots. However, the concepts that I'm going to be teaching still apply to most general C programming, and I'll make sure to cover all of the syntax and stuff uh, that's the same across both of them and point out any differences that there might be through the course of our tutorials. We're going to take a look at a little bit of code because what good would my tutorials be if we didn't do that? Now you're probably not going to understand most of what's going on here, and that's totally okay. That's what the purpose of all of the videos over the next few weeks will be, and hopefully at the end of the series you'll be able to understand most, if not all, of what's going on here. But I pulled this up, which is a piece of code from one of my personal projects, because I want to use it to just give you a few general rules uh, that you need to follow when you're programming in C. Now C, as the name implies, is a text-based programming language, which means that all of the programming commands are written out in text, which you probably didn't need me to tell you that. But there are some important things to remember when you're using a text-based programming language. The first important thing is white space. White space is any space in the code that doesn't contain any actual code. Like this, for example, line 109 is an example of white space because there's not, nothing written there. In, the, in a language like C, white space has no functional value in the programming, which is good because that means all of the space doesn't affect the way the program executes. The advantage of this is that you can use white space to your advantage to make your code more legible. For example, if I didn't have any of these spaces here, and it would probably be pretty difficult to read my code. So this spaces it out and makes it a little bit easier to read at a distance. Also, the other thing that white space effects is, for example, if I didn't have these spaces here between the variable name and the equal sign and the number, this would compile just the same. It doesn't make any difference here. The only time white space actually does make a difference is, uh, like, if I was to delete this uh, space right here, this space is separating the variable declaration for the data type from the variable's name. And if I was to remove that, you could see the color changes because it, the C no longer recognize this as me declaring a variable, it just thinks I'm typing some gibberish. Which leads me to uh, my next point. You can see that a lot of the text is written here in pretty colors. We have a nice navy blue, or a royal blue, a navy blue, different shades of red, a little bit of green, uh, but then there's some text that's written in black. I'm in a special, special development environment of C that helps color code your, your uh, actual programming for you and most development environments for C will do that and they do it in a specific way. All of the green that you see here are comments which I'll have an entire tutorial dedicated to but just to briefly summarize them they don't have much function in the code other than to allow me to write labels and notes for myself. Whereas things that are this uh, navy blue color are generally control structures, tasks, or uh, data declaration. The dark red is generally for numbers and the light red is generally for things like syntax. The black text is the stuff that I've entered. So anything that's in regular black text, the C compiler doesn't recognize as something native to it. So for example, something like task main, for example, is something that's universal across all C programs. However, something like frequency is a variable that I created, and as long as I defined it correctly, C can use it effectively. But that's what the black means. That means it's not something universal to C. It's something that I created. Next, I want to draw your attention to the syntax of what exactly I've written here. Now, syntax relates to the structure of a command. And on each line here, we have one command, which is a single individual instruction. So if we're looking at line 112, we'd say it says float and then varlat1 equals 0.0. .0. This is me declaring a variable which counts as one command. And we know it's one command because it's punctuated with a semicolon right here. 
That's an important part of C, is that every command you write must be punctuated with a semicolon before you can move on to the next line. That's what tells the compiler that you've completed this command or completed this statement and finished the syntax. If I was to say, for example, delete the semicolon and then I compile, it's going to give me an error. So it gives me a warning and it says, you're missing a semicolon and it automatically inserts it by the compiler. That's because my compiler is intelligent enough to make that mistake, but not all compilers are. So you need to take care to make sure that you're properly punctuating all of your statements. Also keep in mind that things like syntax matters, spelling matters, in a lot of cases C is case sensitive as well. So that's something you want to look out for. So for example, if I was to miss a letter here, see it no longer recognizes it. So that's just uh, another thing that you have to look out for, is be very careful about uh, things like spelling. And then one last thing I want to draw your attention to is that um, we use brackets and parentheses uh, to, for a lot of different things, for organizing the code and basically grouping different pieces of code together. So if we're going to look at these collection of lines right here, this is what's called a function. Again, something you'll learn later. But you can see that I'm using parentheses here specifically to outline the arguments of the, the function. And the curly Q brackets are used to outline the body of the function, which contains the set of instructions that it wants to execute. And curly Q brackets, square brackets, and round parentheses, they're not at all interchangeable. They all have specific roles within, uh, within the programming language. So curly Q brackets are generally used to outline the body of things like tasks, control structures, and functions. Parentheses are generally used to outline the arguments of functions. And square brackets a lot of times are used for things like arrays or uh, selecting like either an index from a right or in a timer. It's just important to take away from this that the parentheses and the different types of brackets all have their own, um, their own functions within the C code and they're not interchangeable at all. We've covered a bunch of rules so far, but I still have yet to tell you what I consider is the number one rule of programming, and I'm sure many experienced programmers who are watching will agree with me on this. So the golden rule is that programmers are lazy. Well, maybe a more accurate and nicer way to put it is that as a programmer, you should always be looking for the most efficient way to solve your problem. So what that means is you should try to keep your code as concise as possible. So for example, you can think of it on the level of individual commands and statements. How can you make your, your statements as simple and concise as possible? And then looking at your code as a whole, how can you write your code in as few lines as possible while still being able to solve your problem? and you might make the decision to define some functions to avoid writing code a whole bunch of times or you might replace an if else statement with a ternary operator which is all stuff that you'll be learning in the coming weeks the reason why you want to make your code as concise as possible and write as few lines as possible is not only does it save time but it also minimizes the chance that you're going to make mistakes both in terms of typing but it also minimizes the chance that the computer will make a mistake when it's reading and running your code and also just in general writing less code will allow your computer to execute the code more quickly uh, literally the the execution time will decrease and who doesn't like things that are faster so that's the number one rule that I want to give to you guys is that always look for ways to make your code simpler and more efficient and more concise Anyway, if I could just quickly recap what we went over, C is a text-based programming language, which means it's all typed up. Uh, each of these lines represents a command, and commands must be punctuated by semicolons. The syntax of the command matters, and spelling errors will cause errors in your code and probably cause it to compile incorrectly. White space doesn't have any function in the programming other than to make your code more easy or if you're spacing specific things out so your compiler can recognize things as being native to C. Also, anything that's in a pretty color here is native to C and anything that's in regular black text was defined by me. That's pretty much all that I wanted to go over for now. So now you're ready for your first real C tutorial. That's about all the information I wanted to give you in order to uh, help you build a foundation that'll help your brain to start thinking about C. So I'll see you next week with our first real C programming tutorial where we'll write our first code and we'll be learning about variables and memory allocation. I hope to see you there. 
Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm PV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.